Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. Hopefully you're doing very well today. So, what we're going to do to begin with is do the windrowing and the bailing over in our very small hay field. Uh, or should I say grass field. It is a grass field which we've turned to hay. And uh, yes, it is all ready to be bailed up and taken back to the farm. Ready for the winter. It's for the sheep. To feed to the sheep. Uh, but yeah, we were actually in May in the previous episode. But just so we don't progress too fast, I have kept this part of the haymaking back until this video. But yes, we are going to be moving to June later today. Or later in this video. Uh, so yeah, let's just get this done. It really won't take too long at all. There we go. Make some good hay swaths. The barley is looking fantastic. Fully fertilised. We also do need to fertilise the sugar beets. So I don't know if I should do that today or if I should do it in the next day. I guess it makes sense to do it now because we can see very clearly where we have and haven't been because the crop is still very small. So uh, yeah, I think we'll do it. We'll windrow, windrow this and then as soon as I get the baler onto the tractor, I will do a time lapse. We can very quickly produce two or three bales and then we can, in the same time lapse, do the fertilising. Uh, well, two to three bales is my prediction. Please do feel free to have a guess as well. I haven't got a clue how much we're actually going to get, but if we make more than three, then that's just brilliant. I'm just going to go around the headland first of all, because we do have the pinch point at the top, but that was intentional. Before it used to be the cereal crop which had a pinch point, and the worker did not like that at all. With this field, there'll be no workers, so I can deal with uh, manoeuvring. We don't really need to go across here, but I will do anyway. Still loving the McCormick. But the next tractor I buy, as I've said before, is going to be a Massey Ferguson 7720 something. Actually, I haven't looked to see what the biggest model number is for the Massey Fergusons in the 7700 range, but I would imagine it's a 7726. I don't think anything changed before they released the 7S series. Yep, I've just taken a look. It is the 7726S. Which was, uh, I, I think it's discontinued, I think. I don't know for sure. I know they brought in the 7S, and I think it replaced the 7700 series. So nice to have the 7700 series in the game though. Okay, right. So, go up and down here a few more times, and then we can start bailing. There we go. Lovely. Right, let's fold this up. Yes, in the future I'm not going to go across a very open area because as you can see I always catch it and it makes a big pile which can cause issues for the baler. So yeah, into the uh, shed this is going to go. Bring the baler out. But by the time we harvest the barley field, which will be in two months time, which is about two episodes time, <laughs> yeah, time passes pretty fast, I would love to be using a square baler. Why am I indicating? But for now, we're going to keep using the round baler, because that's what we have. And we also have the round bale auto stacker, which is very handy. Right, I don't want to block the baler. <laughs> that would be so silly. Uh, if I try and get this as far over to the left as possible. Luckily, it does have steering on the wind drawer, so you can really get in some very tight places. There we go. That's good. And then we'll bring that out. I don't know if you like me describing everything as I go, but it's just a habit I've got into. I'm at risk of pointing out the obvious. Okay, so, yes, as I said, we'll do that fertilising in just a moment, but let's first of all see how quickly the baler is going to fill up. Bearing in mind we do have 49% already in here. The uh, straw which is already in will be converted into hay. Which is different, yeah, it used to continue with the crop type which was already in it. But now we get the current crop type instead. Yep, it's converted. So, yeah, we just have to remove a half. Since half was already in. So we'll count that as half a bale. Let's see how many bales we produce. It looks like it's going to be more than three, which is brilliant. 
That's filling up really quickly. Yep, here comes number two already. Wow, that was so fast. Uh, so yeah, maybe eight bales. At this rate, we're going to have to sell some. And that just goes to show that we don't need a bigger grass area. This is all we need. We're nearing an end with the fertilizer. Looking really good. So that really is it for this field until harvest. Just leave it to grow. We applied the first application with the planter. And look where we've ended up. In my brand new forest, which... Oh wow, we've already got deer in here. That's strange. I'm sure I never saw deer here when it was just a normal field. So I wonder if they can sort of detect where the trees are. That looks amazing. If I go over to them, they're going to run away, but let's just have a quick look at them. Hello, dears. Hello. <laughs> Hello, dear. Ah, oh, they're so nice. Uh, there's some which haven't actually started to grow yet. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the willow. And willow are the fastest growing here. So that's weird. That's uh, an interesting one. Uh, so yes, it's all going to evolve. Uh, this is nothing compared to what it's going to look like eventually. But it is such a nice area, and I think the spacing is just right. We could have probably put a few more trees in, but we could always fill in the gaps. If if I need to fill in the gaps, I think we probably have enough trees for one area. I might cause lag otherwise. As for the bales, wow, what an achievement that was. That was just absolutely incredible. Just show you the statistics. 11. And we almost got another one. So, yeah, it, it pretty much was... 12, yeah, <laughs> we'll just call it 11, it's just easier, it was a great success, 11 and a bit, I still need to cultivate between the vines, but we have plenty of time to do that, we'll do it in June, and we'll park this back in this shed here, I wonder what kind of used machines we're going to get in June, in May we still have the Hallmaster, and this Grimmer RH2460 potato and sugar beet conveyor. It will create nicely packed pallets you can sell. So, well, we are doing sugar beets, so that could be a possibility. It's only 13,000. Um, hmm. Should I buy it? The thing is, they do get more money for doing pallets. Probably not. It's already going to be quite a big job because that is a relatively large area for the sugar beet. I'm just going to put it all into trailers because it's a very, very bulky crop. Well, since we have 11 to pick up, we're going to use the auto stacker. A perfect machine for the job. We'll then bring them back to the yard. I need to get a bale spike for the JCB. And then we can uh, unload this outside the shed and then we can put them into the shed very nicely with the telehandler. Yeah, that sugar beet is going to look very different tomorrow. And because it is grass, this field, and grass grows very quickly in the spring, it will probably be half grown again uh, by the time we have rested. Another reason for wanting a square baler is because we can probably get more 
into a bale. I know with the round bales you can get up to about 9,000 litres, which is very impressive, but not with this particular baler. We would have to go bigger. I'm not sure what the highest capacity is for a square. It might be nine as well. Uh, but my main reason for getting a square is just because I find them much easier to work with. But then if a used, bigger, round baler came up, we would probably buy that, just because we already have the auto stacker. So you, you've probably noticed already, plenty of U-turns happen in this series. It's just because I'm always trying to find the best route to go down. Plans change. Literally. Overnight. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, I always try and keep the content fresh as well. Don't want to be repeating myself. So there we go, we have 11 bales. We probably could get away with selling them. As we already have loads. But I think for now, might be best just to keep them. That barley crop might be ready in June. I should think it will be ready in June. I was going to wait two more episodes, but we'll have to see. Right, so those bells are currently lurking behind the harvester. I think I'll just put them into here. Okay, so what I don't want is for them to make a mess. So, try my best not to hit the back wall. Yep, that's about right. Perfect. Oh, yes. Brilliant. Oh, yes, look at that. That couldn't have been better. So, it's taking up space in the shed now. Um, we'll try and clear these ones first, I would say. And yeah, this can park next to it. So we don't need the bell spike right now for the JCB. You see how I U-turn? Because things change. Plans change all the time. But we do need to still get it at some point. Uh, so anyway, yes, we'll now rest. See what June holds for us. Certainly be going to 8am, not 9 I could even go earlier. Beautiful weather. Look at that. What kind of uh, temperatures are we looking at here? Minus one. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing that's a glitch. It's probably more like what we have here. 34. Um, yeah, I, I guess a bit of work needs to be put into that. But yeah, clearly, it is very nice weather. So use machines today. Oh, crikey. Are we going to be able to run that? 230 horsepower? Y you would actually think that I was influencing this. That's actually spooky. No, I did not put this in here. I did not cheat. Um, that is just an incredible coincidence. Which we can't afford. Um, but we could do if we sold the baler. I actually can't believe that. Isn't that the first square baler that we've had? Wow. Uh, so, yes, we are definitely going to get it. But as predicted, yes, that round baler is going to have to go. Uh, the front load needs to go as well. We got the round baler cheap anyway. Oh yeah, and what was the maximum capacity for the bales? 240 centimetres. I'm not too sure that's going to be in litres. But it sounds probably bigger than the biggest round bale. And since this is going to be sold, we can also sell the auto stacker. And again, we can U-turn and we can say that we, we do need to get the uh, bell spike for the JCB as soon as possible. As we're going to need it in the barley field. It's nice to see actually that the barley field is not ready. Because I didn't really want to harvest it in June, like I said, so it's going to be July. 
That's good. It's turned out really well. It is indeed a shame about losing the 84% hay which is currently in the baler, but it won't be worth that much, and it's just one of those things. Can't really do much about it. So we're getting £8,220 back for that. Uh, also the pallet fork, 955. The front loader is going to be 4127. Of course I am spending money on repairs here. We're going to keep the front weight. And actually I might as well reconfigure that to not have the front loader attacher anymore. Won't save any money, just looks different. There we go, because it is no longer our front loader tractor. We, we don't have one, we're going to use the telehandler. And the forklift. So I'll leave that tractor there. We'll jump back into the McCormick. And we'll go and sell this auto stacker. Which thankfully did get another use. There we go. So that's going to be more expensive, I'm hoping. 7536. Good. And we almost have enough, but not quite, amazingly. We're so close. Just wondering what else I could sell. Oh, we have the corn. I wonder if the corn... I don't want to lose this, by the way. don't want to lose the bale. I don't think we will do. But I wonder if the corn is going to be worth selling now. It's been so long. Oh, it's still bad. It's always so bad. I wouldn't recommend doing corn unless it's just me. Uh, for some reason, my prices are always really bad. We do still have some oats in storage. We're keeping the sorghum. That's our chicken food. But yeah, we might as well go and sell that. The price is nowhere near as bad as what it is for the corn. So we can go to the grain elevator. Tag the place. Let's get the trailer. All empty. Get it filled up over here. Oh, actually, I don't know why I'm trying to... Uh, rummage around trying to find something to sell because we have absolutely loads of eggs. The reason why we have the oats, in case you're wondering, is because at one stage I was hoping to do some cereal production fairly early on, but at the moment it's going to be at least a year in game time before we do that, so we'll be able to grow some more oats before then. So I might as well just sell them. The eggs are incredible, we have so many, if the price is right we'll sell them as well. Well, eggs are about £500 short of their decent price, which I would consider decent. Um, but I think at this stage, since we have so many and we're producing them so fast, we'll just get rid of them. It's nice to be in this position. Uh, so we now have £130,000. Let's buy that baler before it disappears. Oh, look. One before it has disappeared. Uh, so, what kind of tyre? I'm always drawn to the BKT ones for some reason. I always think they look so good. And I'm in no way sponsored by BKT. It's just, for some reason, I like the look of them. So, although they're all good, we will go with them. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be £69,169. There we go. We'll go and pick it up. Fantastic colour match, even though this is McCormick, and that's the case. I can't wait to find out how good this is. I'm sure it'll be very good. It looks really, really nice. Now I do want to 
harvest of barley. So typical. Uh, I could do it on my famous U-turn. <laughs> no, it's not ready to harvest. Um, we need a sign putting up at the farm saying, no U-turns allowed. And here we are back at the farm, ready for the harvest in the next episode. Yes, I have a glitched pallet just there. I've got to dig some pallets out soon. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that is ready. And as you can see, we can change the bale size. 240 is the biggest, that's what we're currently set to. But we can go down to 180. But we don't need to. 240, the bigger, the better. So we need to finish off this episode in June by working in the vineyard. Uh, we need to do some cultivation work and we need to also do some spraying. So I think spraying first, we don't want to be compacting down the cultivation work that we do. We'll finish with the, the cultivating. And as we found out the last time we did this, the consumption rate of the sprayer is very slow. So it's extremely cheap to run. I'm told uh, that I don't need to go up every row, because I went up every single row last time. Uh, but even if I do go up every single row, the consumption rate is so slow. So, I think so. If I went up this one, uh, I guess you're right. Yeah, because we'd cover the... I think you are supposed to go up every single one, but yeah, I get what you mean. We can uh, get away with not doing every single one, because we have a, a certain working width. You could probably get a huge self-propelled sprayer and just somehow go up the whole lot in one go. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, travel on the side with a great big boom going over it all. Not what you're supposed to do, but I guess it's a, a workaround. Also, when we get the olives, whenever that may be, we're going to get the fence vineyard tractor. The fence tractor like this. Uh, I really want to use it. I love the Landini, but I want to try out both. There's no point selling the Landini because it's just a workhorse and we would need two tractors anyway because the olives are not going to be here. They're most likely going to be in fill number 12, which I'm hoping to buy which is nowhere near here. I would love to buy fair number 12. But we really have succeeded now at the grapes. There's no more expenses as such, except for a bit of fertilizer and diesel. Okay, so I guess I don't need to go up here. Ah, it's interesting. It has missed bits by not going... I'm going to go up every single one. I appreciate the people who said I don't need to. But, yeah, I think for a more thorough job, it would seem sensible. So, just like crashing into it. <laughs> oh, crikey. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, play, play however you uh, feel necessary. I tend to play differently I think to the majority of people anyway because I get quite a few comments saying why did he do it this way it's just the way I play I know it can be frustrating anyway we'll crack on then we'll do the cultivating And the last one, I've gone up all the others, but you can see it still is missing this slither, so it's always worth doing it. You do have to go up every single one to be thorough. Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, the trees, the trees there are looking absolutely lovely. Really transform the look of this map in this area. Okay, there we go. So that should all look really good. It does. Um, oh, went in the crop a bit. And uh, this canopy. Not sure if they've grown any more. Don't think they have. I'm just surprised at the willow. 
Unless I'm wrong, maybe the willow have grown and this is another type, but I'm pretty sure it was the willow. Yeah, the issue with driving in the crop is just because there isn't much space there. Eventually the vineyard will be extended, so there won't be a crop in the turning area. So, there's my cultivator. We still have 42% left in here. Which is very impressive. Try and position these so we can fit more stuff in. It's just the same thing. Going up every single vine, cultivating the ground to add some yield. I think it's about 5% yield. There we go. And then that will be everything. Um, nothing else to do before harvest, which will be in a few episodes time. You see, it's come around so fast. It's because I'm skipping the winter, and I don't want to skip the winter, but really, there isn't that much to do. Uh, we don't have loads of animals or anything, so... For me, it's probably still best to keep skipping the winter. Now in the future, in future Let's Plays in different on different maps, there will be some where I don't even use seasons, uh, because I didn't with FS19. I had, tend to have one seasons series going, and one without. So what we'll do is we'll just switch off the seasonal growth, and keep a fixed month so it'll always look like summer but for this series we're going to be sticking with seasons Now I'm really hoping that the barley field is going to fund the new field. Because we're going to have not only the barley itself, but also the straw. And if the price is good, we should be able to really bring in quite a bit there. Uh, now, we're going to keep a small percentage of the barley for the chickens, but as we still have loads of sorghum, the majority is going to be sold. But there we go. We're done. And I do need to check the feed troughs for the chickens. Okay. Yeah, they should be done. But that is the vineyard finish with. Everything is looking so good. Please do also give me some feedback on uh, the rate that this series is going. Do you think we are progressing too fast? Too slowly? Or do you think it's just right? Obviously having two episodes, uh, three days a week, does uh, allow us to progress fairly quickly. Right, so I think I might use this tractor actually. It's going to be good enough for just moving a bit of sorghum around the yard. I can't wait to test my bale loading skills with square bales in FS22 using a telehandler and the trailer is just over there hiding. Right, so that is way more than we actually need. But we might as well just fill it up. These chickens around here won't take that much. But the others will take maybe 30%. Okay, so yeah, like I said, not expecting much to disappear here. 3%. Because there's only 30 and now for the big load, 360 chickens. Let's see how much they take. Oh, not bad actually, although it wasn't empty. So, yep, there we go. 
keep this here for now. This tractor now is on uh, feeding duty. And the voucher will probably be sold in the near future. Didn't want to, but we actually don't need so many tractors. And soon we're going to need just one bigger tractor, I'd have thought. One small, one big. So, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.